Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Leadership Sessions. Hey, today we have something a little special for you. Uh, we have Pastor Robert Baxter here from Paris, France. He was with church uh, with us this Sunday. We're so honored to have him. He is a part of our 10C family. Yes, That's uh, yes. just a family of churches that the Holy Spirit's connected around the world. And uh, Stephanie and I, uh, Stephanie, my wife, is also here at the table, along with Pastor John, uh, youth pastor here at the church. And um, uh, Stephanie and I, though, we have the, the honor of helping uh, direct and lead and, and coordinate much of, of what uh, we do with 10C here out of Houston. Uh, but Pastor Robert, you're just uh, such a, um, a gift from the Lord. And, wow. and in many ways, you, you're a leader yourself of, of the 10C movement globally. And um, I know you're a trusted leader. And so uh, well, it's just been so awesome wow. to, to have you here. It's and been so, great to be here. Yeah, yeah. And so while, while you were here, uh, you actually shared with our, our leadership team, our staff here, right. and uh, you gave just some awesome thoughts. And, and um, it, it was on leadership, of course, so that, that fits quite well for our usual context here on this program. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you shared about running your race, finishing your course, yeah. and living for the day that uh, the Lord says, well, well done, yeah. good and faithful servant. And yeah. um, I know our whole leadership team, a lot of, a lot of tears, tears in the eyes. Uh, and, um, you know, I'd love you to share anything from that, yeah. that again, that, that touched us. Um, but I know we talked over some points beforehand of, uh, we don't have quite as long as, as we did for that, but sure. we, we just wanted to share with you guys some of that just awesome, like how to live for that legacy, living for the legacy of a whole life through serving the Lord well, healthy, and and, and not getting in that burnout phase that right. it seems like exactly. so often leaders almost inevitably have to go through this burnout. And it's like, well, is that inevitable or is, or is there something we can do to avoid that? So yeah. anyway, with that long introduction, no, I'd, I'd love you to Thank just you. encourage us at the table again, sure, sure. but also encourage those of us joining in today. Yeah. Uh, with just some thoughts along those lines, it was so yeah. good. It was so rich. Well, anyway, it's it's great to be with you guys, seriously, and it's been an awesome weekend, and we're always just so blessed uh, when we're here. You know, yeah. and I had to drop off Catherine yes, at the airport yes. a few minutes ago, and so we sort of missed that little window where she could have been here at the table with yes. us. But, you know, it's it's always a privilege to speak to to leaders, and it doesn't matter whether you're a leader of a church, a ministry, or you know, sell a you know home group, or you're, you're just struggling to lead yourself. You know, everybody <laughs> is a leader to, to some degree. You know, right. and and in some ways, it's easier to lead a church than it is to lead yourself. Mm. Uh, mm. And it's a great danger. So, uh, I think wow. I want I want to start off. You know, there there are two Straight lies, two general lies that everybody struggles with in their life at some point, mm -hmm. especially as a leader. And I, the first lie is I can't do anything. Hmm. You know, just just that general sense of feeling overwhelmed, and and you, you know, when you look through scriptures, you see many of these guys. You know, Joshua, Solomon. You know, just about mm -hmm. every great leader that God raised up in the early stages dealt with this feeling of I can't do anything, mm -hmm. um, and it's a devastating lie that that God has mm -hmm. to break in our lives. Because a lot of times the whole performance orientation that we adopt in our life, um, you know, and the striving for excellence, the striving for success, the striving for productivity is not based in faith. It's actually based in this, mm. this parameter of a lie that we've believed. Wow. So we have to break that lie. It's, it's like lie number one. Yeah. All right, lie number two is just as deadly as lie number one, and that is I can do everything. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Yeah. yeah. By yeah. myself, you're saying I can do everything by myself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I can do it all. I, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the scripture actually says I can do all things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop there. I can all sure. do all things through Christ. Yeah. Who strengthens me? And so, see, when we are really living for Him, in Him, and by Him, uh, He 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 circumcises off of us this feeling like we have to do everything. Wow. Mm. So good. I love you know, that. Yeah. So so these two mm -hmm. lies are like our two main battlegrounds. Interesting. They're both two just extremes. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, how often is that the case? That's it's so just, true. It's just the extremes. Yeah. yeah. And they're, the, you know, the, the second one, you know, I, I can do everything. 
Um, I, we used to be part of a ministry and back in the, the, the 80s and 90s. And I remember the, the leader of that particular ministry, he got a great preacher, so good about, you know, getting teenagers out of their compromise and, you know, sold out to God, going to the foreign mission field and a great preacher, really. But hit one of his famous sayings was, you know, if it's going to be, it's up to me. Hmm. I want you to think about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be, it's up to me. Yeah, and, I've heard that. You know, yeah, and, yeah. you know, and he'd get everybody like chanting this. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it, yeah. You know, and I think later on, you know, when when we were going through fa different phases of burnout, <clears throat> it's like, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is destructive. <laughs> <laughs> it's not up to me after all. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> oh. Mm. And and the but the problem is, you know, we we buy into this thing like, okay, if it, the job is going to get done, I have to do the job. Mm. Really? Mm. Why? Now think about Jesus' whole strategy. His whole strategy was spent about three years, three and a half years preaching the kingdom, doing miracles like nobody's ever seen, and to a degree that probably nobody would ever see, in three and a half years, and then turn the whole kingdom of heaven <laughs> over to 12 guys that could barely stand each other. Mm, one commits suicide, mm. you know. Uh, one is like, I don't care what you tell me about him being resurrected until I put my finger in his hands and sigh, you know, I will not believe. Total skeptic. Okay, yeah, total uh, skeptic. Amazing. John, who was probably a teenager at the time, called an apostle. Think about that amazing. for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, totally, un, you know, fairly unschooled kind of guy, very rough. He ran a fairly successful business, you know, business as a fisherman, but still uh, very untrained, unskilled, and, and Jesus turned his kingdom over to these 11 guys. Amazing. After just three and a half years with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's scary. You know, so why, do, why are we possessed <laughs> with this feeling like, you know, I can't, I can't turn anything over because, you know, it might not be done the way I would have mm. it done. Whoa. Now, don't you think Jesus could run the kingdom better than the, the those eleven guys? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. sure. But he chose not to. Mm. Anyway, Amazing. I just you know looking at that, you're like, yeah. okay, hey, <laughs> let's just you know chill a little. Maybe bit. Maybe I'm not that important. Yeah. yeah. In, in the I south, so. uh, in Texas, Pastor Art, we call that a slice of humble pie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's humble pie. <laughs> totally. Oh. And I don't know if that's why God sent me to France, you know, just to sort of keep the humility, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, definitely after you've been in France for a while, you know, you are just never going to be the king of the world. You know, it's just like, okay, this is, this is no longer in the scheme of things. Being king in France is dangerous business. Oh, too. yeah. They all got their heads cut off, I mind you. Wow. You know, so... Yeah. So one day uh, is struggling through, you know, many of these things. And listen, you know, I, honestly... Compared to a lot of guys, I've had a very easy life. Um, and there, I don't think there's any real trophy you get for, for surviving, you know. <laughs> Although, I have to say, you know, <laughs> there are very few American missionaries that have survived France. Just, <laughs> we'll get true. that out of the way, very okay? Wow. But you don't get a trophy for surviving, okay? Mm. You, you really only get a trophy for two things, faith and obedience. So that's, mm. that's really all you get a trophy for. Amazing. That's it. And, you know, and that's all he wants. Yeah. It's faith yeah. and obedience. Mm -hmm. So, but I remember this one time, I was really super struggling, and I talked about the three do's. Yes, the three do's. This okay. was so good. And uh, <laughs> and so, and the Lord spoke to me, and so there, the, the first do is the must do. Uh, the second do is the want to do. And the third do is the can do. Uh, so these are the three do's of mm. life. And pretty much everything you do in your life you can separate into one of these three categories. Mm. Now, when we do leadership training, we actually have the participants take out a piece of paper and a pen, and they actually write down, okay? It's, I, you know, we take time to pray. Mm. It's kind of like, okay, I want you to write down at least three or four of the must-do items in your life. Great. You know, and, and maybe number one might be, you know, be a good husband 
or be a good father. You know what I mean? It's sure. things that you know that if you fail there, it brings reproach to the king. Okay, then there's the want to do. And, uh, and I usually have people say, you know, just write down three or four things. And a lot of times Christian leaders have a real struggle with the want to do. Because mm-hmm. they kind of feel like, is it really spiritual? Mm-hmm. And the, the example that I gave, which to me is the best in the whole scripture, is that of King David, who decides when he wakes up one morning and says, ah, I don't like the idea that the, the, you know, the Ark of the Covenant is under a tent and I'm living in this great palace. I'm going to build mm-hmm. a palace for God. Nathan says, yeah, go for it. And then the Lord says, what? I'm a God that heaven is too small for me. You know, and man is going to build me a house to live in. But the desire of David becomes the mission of Solomon and becomes the template for the temple of heaven. Mm. And even in wow. the new covenant, we're called the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. you know, this Beautiful. single desire that was t- completely unscriptural, there was absolutely no scriptural mandate in the law of Moses for a temple. Mm. As a matter of fact, just the opposite. Opposite. You know, I will yeah. not live in a house made of stone. Yeah. Wow. You know, and so David comes along, he's got this. So God does bless our want to do's sometimes. And, but then there's the can do. So the can do is like, I can, you know, uh, set the chairs right. You know, I can do the filming. I can respond to this crisis over here. I can take an offering for that thing over there. You know, I can go to that conference. And there's a lot of the can do's. And the Lord spoke to me one day, he said, son, you will all, I will always give you an abundance of grace for the must do. Yeah. You will never lack grace for the must do. Because when I command you to do something, I will always give you more than what you need to get it done. Mm. So think about it with me. If you have more from God than what you need to get it done, will you ever burn out? No. Theoretically, no. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So then he said to me, he says, for the want to do's, because I'm a good father and I get great joy in what my children enjoy, there will sometimes be grace. Okay, and that's where it gets dangerous because you have to have a lot of integrity and discernment and wisdom and know, you know, when you start walking down a road of the want to, want to do, and you discuss, you might, might be like David, you suddenly like fall into something you discover is, wow, this is the will of God. I didn't have a word for that. Mm. I mean, God's never told me to be a pastor. Wow. I've never had, I've never had a prophecy. (laughs) Wow. Mm. About being a pastor. Mm. You know, but I, I, I love the people. I love the idea of growth and, and helping people grow. So I was just, I just help people grow. Amazing. But I don't ever even call myself pastor. Mm. I'm not sure really what I am. Just a, a <laughs> Christian, you know, child of God. So... Um, a father. But it was, yeah, a father. father. So, and, 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 yeah, and I love being a father. I really do. I love being a dad. Shepherd. Shepherd, yeah. And then the can-dos. And, and this is where I have found that every time I go through burnout, extreme fatigue, um, I'm making really bad decisions, bad choices, or I'm getting bitter at the church or, you know, upset with people, I'm sure you guys never go through any of that. Never, no, never, never, never. It's, ne- it's never you, happened. Never do that. It's never, never happened. Never, 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 People never. are always easy and lovely to work with. Absolutely. <laughs> totally. People always agree. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, they agree on everything. Especially yeah. here at Dwelling Place. They're yeah, always so encouraging, never critical or condemning. <laughs> if if yeah. you don't understand sarcasm, this is what it is. <laughs> yes. This, is, this is what it is. There's your lesson. <laughs> so the can-do is what always, always, always gets men and women of God into trouble. Mm. Mm. Uh, always and and if you, if anybody's out there and you're going through burnout, I would just challenge you uh, to really look at the do's in your life. Mm-hmm. So good, because here's the problem: if God commands you to do something, and that command leads to burnout, basically we're saying the grace is insufficient. Mm. The cross wasn't enough. I needed more. Mm. I could never come to that conclusion. I won't allow myself to yeah. come to that conclusion. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. You know, because of what he did for me. 
And if what he did for me brought me into salvation, adoption as a son, how can then I say, okay, obeying his covenant, there's never enough grace to do that. It doesn't make sense. So I, I can't go there. And I think it's too dangerous for us to allow ourselves to believe that. It, it you know, I obeyed God and I burned out. No. Hmm. You obeyed God that got you on the track, but then you started adopting and acquiring all of this other baggage hmm. that has weighed you down. The road you're on may be the road that God designated, but he didn't necessarily command you to pick up all those rocks along the way. Wow. Yeah. Mm. You know, so he gave you grace for the road, but not grace for the rocks. So if you're tired oh, wow. and weary, it's not the problem of the road, it's the problem of all the weights you've picked up in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's just not worth it, guys. You know, I, we, I, listen, I believe in revival. I believe the Lord's coming soon. I, I do, but at the same time, our calling is to a marathon. Mm -hmm. It's never to a sprint. Yep, yep. You know? So it's like we, we balance those two beliefs. We balance the belief of, yeah, I look at the clouds and I say, I, w I hope the Lord is in that cloud there Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. Come, Lord Jesus. Absolutely. Yes. Maranatha, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of like, hmm, I look at my grandkids and I say, I'm going to finish strong by the grace of God. I'm yeah. not so going to allow myself to go through burnout, uh, to get so tired that I can't resist depression, um, you know, mental imbalance, anger, and all of this other toxic stuff. Yeah. No, because we've got a marathon, and it's not how good you start that counts. Mm -hmm. It's how well you finish that counts. That's what people will, will remember. Does wow. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. You know, Beautiful. so I just, uh, can we pray, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, I don't know if this is the end or not, but... Uh, you know, it might be a good fitting to end, but I, you know, there may yeah, be more, yeah. you know, but I just sense that there's Please, a yeah. point here that maybe those, somebody's watching right now and you've, you've gone through some burnout. Maybe you're right in the midst of burnout right now. And, uh, and I, I, and I just really believe, I really believe that the grace of God is not at fault here. Mm. Amen. And, and maybe you've Amen. struggled, you, you know, there's a part of you like that carnal side that blames God and you kind of resent God calling you, and you feel that the place you're in, that bad place, is his fault. Wow. Um, but it's not. It's not his fault. And um, it's just you picked up stuff that he didn't call you to pick up. And that's where you have to be humble, recognize it, and have the integrity to repent from that. But we're going to pray right now. And, uh, and, really, and release the grace of God upon you, amen? Mm -hmm. We're gonna break as well off of you that spirit of condemnation, yes. and with that also too, the spirit of performance, yeah. and this, this obsession to produce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every leader that's watching right now, and we just speak your grace over everyone. It doesn't mean that there's approval for, for the, the, the way we've deviated from your grace. Um, you know, sometimes we, we just have to, uh, you know, you know, bite the bullet, accept the, the consequences of our choices. But Father, today I sense there's just such mercy, yeah. the chesed of God. Mm. Just your love, your covenantal loving kindness is flowing uh, right now from your throne of grace to everyone watching. And, and Lord, we, we sincerely pray for those who have just been handicapped through stress, mm. depression, uh, anxieties, worries, um, and, and just obsessive thoughts of, of being productive and, and, and being, being up to par. And we mm. release you right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. We just say over you, be released mm. from that prison of your soul and just allow that spirit of adoption, allow that, a spirit, that spirit of adoption to cry out from within your spirit, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. And I just see the Lord coming to you right now in mercy and grace and kindness and softness and gentleness. I just see the Father taking you in his arms. He's telling you that it's, it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. Hallelujah. But you're just going to have to give up some of those things that you've been carrying for so long because you thought it was your duty mm. and it's not. Mm. And so today the Lord releases you, hallelujah, into the must-do Yes. And at times the I want to do. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And, and, and Lord, too, those servants, those ones that are in ministry, special pas- especially pastoral care, that are just really weary mm. of the sick yes. sheep. Father, we speak strength yes. over them today, right yes. now. Right. In the name of Jesus, your job, Pastor, is not to change the sheep. The only job you have to change, the only person you're supposed to change is yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's a big enough job and a hard enough job. So we release you from this obsession of t- trying to change the sheep. Wow. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, you, you model before the sheep what, what it is the Lord wants you to model. You become the, the focal point. You become the mm-hmm. example of, for them to follow. If they follow, the glory goes to God. If they don't follow, they suffer the consequences. But you are free from every obsession of yeah. trying to change them. Wow. It's not your job. Good. If the Holy Spirit can't change them, why do you think you can? Mm. <laughs> so be released today. And may the Lord right now restore the joy of serving him. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wow, that's so Praise good. God. I um. I love that you're 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 you're, show, you're talking about how how merciful he is mm. and that that grace that's there because it's like you said I think people can get in the they can get lost on the can do's yeah because they can do it right and they want to serve the Lord and they yeah. love Him and yeah. right after all the greatest commandments to love Him with all your heart soul mind and strength and so with the best yeah. of intentions. Yeah. People can take on so much more, and, and and they just don't realize they're not called to just do it all. That's right. And uh, and what I love about the must dos is well, like one thing I love about the must dos you said is that you know when you're in a must do and you get resistance, mm. you know it's it's an attack on the assignment, yes, and right. that it, you can push through that resistance. Yes. yes. When right. you're out there right. on your own on a can do <laughs> and you get resistance, you might have to go okay. Maybe there's resistance because the grace of God isn't here. Right. But when you're operating in a must-do, the resistance is not a question of the grace of God. It's yeah. it's actually there to for your faith to push through it. That's right. And that's then good. I, I honestly, even the want-dos is so wonderful. That's To me, that's the way, what I hear you saying is that's where you're really walking in that relationship. It's a yeah. relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just make up want-dos yeah. and go out and do them. It's, it's right. really a conversation you have with the yeah. Lord where he will honor the desires of your heart, but you also trust him to lay down the desires of your heart. Yes. And then even in the end, you don't even, you know, he may have put those desires there to begin with, and mm. it's all a mystery of his of his providence. But yeah, so but yeah I think with the best of intentions, that's why this is so important, and I, I was so glad to have you here to say it, is just that, um, you know, good leaders can get caught in that that sort of thing. Every one of them does. Absolutely. We, we all do. I, and, and, and I wonder even if at times the Lord doesn't purposefully, you know, put us in a place where we get trapped. Mm. We have to learn. You know, gr- grace isn't the, 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 the permission of heaven to do carnal things. Mm. Yeah. Grace is the ability to walk as Jesus walked and to walk with him. And to learn that, you know, so, and if the son of God had to learn obedience to the things he suffered, how much more you and I, so, you know, it's all part of his economy, Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, and everything needs to be flowing out of that intimacy with him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and and the, these are all just your basic lessons of life. And Mm -hmm. this is why it's so great, you know, to sit around the table, kind of shoot things around. And, and this is why it's so important too, to not walk alone. Yeah. You know, because we we definitely need this, and and I, I, I my dream is where we, in even within our Tensi family, you know, where we do get to a point where we trust one another enough, we say, hey, you know, brother, uh, you guys see all this stuff you're doing? I'm a little concerned that maybe you bit off more than what God really wanted you to bite off. Are you really sure? Mm-hmm. Can we just maybe look at this together? Mm-hmm. And we don't look at that as, oh, you know, who are you to question me? But we we invite that. Yeah. Does that make it's sense? Beautiful. You know, where we yeah. really so good. are asking, would you would you please look in my life and help me? Yeah. You know, that's why we have on all the cars, we have those rear view mirrors. Because we have blind spots. When you're focused on what's ahead, yeah. you don't you don't have peripheral view. Mm-hmm. And so you don't see the dangers. Wow, that's so that's good. why we need each other. Yeah. So good. You know. That's so yeah. good. Wow. One of the things awesome. you said this morning, um, I think you were saying, uh, 
we don't die for the want tos and the can do. You know, <laughs> yeah. you don't die for your rights. You know, I'll just say, haha, as an American, we don't die for our right to bear arms. You know, that's our American thing. Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to get political, but whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> we don't, you know, we die, you know, we die for the must do's. Yeah. All else is lost yeah. mm -hmm. without Christ. Like all else falls to the ground um, without that strong foundation. So yeah. I love that. Well, and that and that term, you know, it's like uh, it's it's you don't hear of it hear it much anymore because of all of the the air power <laughs> and you know smart bombs and all the rest. But in, mm -hmm. back in the the old times, like World War One, World War Two, the whole point would be to take the high ground because mm -hmm. if you had the high ground, then you're you know, the enemy has at a disadvantage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you would scout out and say, okay, where are the high places? Right. Wow. Where are the hills? And you would look for the most strategic one. And you go, okay, we can't conquer every hill out there. Mm -hmm. But we've got to conquer one that gives us a strategic advantage over our enemy. Mm. And so that's where that phrase comes from. Mm. This is a hill worth dying for. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you know this is this is the one he this hill here, so this good. is the one worth dying for because when we get that, it gives us the strategic advantage over our enemies. Wow. And so yeah, your can dos, even your want to dos, mm. folks, those are those are not hills to begin with. Those yeah, are yeah. like little plant, you know, valley areas that may be lush and pleasurable. Pleasurable is that a word? We'll go with it. It works. Ple pleasurable. Like it. You know, uh, I like you're the only bilingual feel. person here. <laughs> I actually so prefer no pleasure. My English is a little rusty, guys. <laughs> Not at all. But you know, it's yeah, the hill of the must do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is kind of, okay. I have to conquer this hill. This is what I was born for. Uh, yes, I yeah. was born for this hill. You know, it's like yeah. Paris. Say, I, I have a grace to travel, but Paris is my hill. Yeah. Mm. I have to, I, I can't be willing to sacrifice the hill in order to go out and travel the nations. Wow. Because because then I lose my base, my my whole reason for being. Hmm. Okay, so that's my hill. I have to look at that hill and say, this is the hill that I will die for if necessary. I'm not gonna die for the traveling out to the other places, okay? This is this is my hill. And and I have to surround that hill and say, this is what I'm willing to die for. Mm -hmm. Okay, and folks, you can't die for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but that's a really good spot. piece of advice. <laughs> some some people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everything's life and yeah. Because yeah. everybody's looking for a cause. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's what's so crazy so right now. Especially, you know, your guys' generation and younger's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, you know, color my hair and tat my skin and pierce whatever I can pierce and <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna, you know, fight for a cause, you know, save the I don't know. Turtles. Everything. I mean, the, the turtles. You know, I'm gonna, you know, it's and we that. love the turtles we as do. much as the next <laughs> no, person. No, no. We want everyone no to know we <laughs> stand for the animals. <laughs> we're inclusive. Not, okay. We're not quite as passionate as we are about the high call of Jesus Christ, but <laughs> But again, so, yeah. you know, you don't want to die on that hill. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. You know, come on guys. Not on Turtle Hill. Not on Turtle Hill. <laughs> you you no, it is not worth it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You know, the other thing I'd love to, just one more thing you said this morning, I just have to share, but it, I'm kind of tying them together, and they're, yeah. they're, it's so good, is the can-dos are, uh, they're so tempting, and they're there because you can do them. Mm -hmm. You can do them in your own strength. That's why they're so easy to go out and do. You right. can do it. Right. At this church, we can start a thousand different ministries. Right. Yes. doesn't mean we must, or we should, or we're called to, or there's a grace for that. And, you know, you can do it, but really the things that God's called you to do, you shared today, yep. are, are really things we can't do. Yep. The must-dos are not necessarily things you can do. The must-dos may be impossible in your own strength. Yeah. And yeah. so it, it, if you get so busy burning out on all the things you can do in your own strength, Come on, man. you might be losing That's right. the faith and the obedience to give yourself to the things you really can't do, but you must do. That's right. Because God's going to do them through yeah. you because yeah. they're impossible dreams. See, I, I absolutely believe that the must-dos that God gives to you, he's not going to give to somebody else. Mm. But the can-dos are someone else's must-dos. 
Mm. So when you when you get all busy doing the can do's, yeah. is... you're actually stealing someone's must do. Wow. That's so important wow. in church. Church okay. leadership, church conversations. Yeah, you go jump take that ministry because you can, but maybe there's someone That's who's right. actually called. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh and and every one of your must do's are impossible by definition. Mm. This is why they're intimidating. And we, we prefer to get ourselves lost in the can do's and the wanna do's rather than really focus on the must do's. Yeah. Why? Because the must do's really are impossible to do. And th that's but that's so the good. whole point. We're we're born to do the impossible yeah. thing. Even something simple. Sorry, I'm just thinking here like <laughs> go. I can be an okay husband in the natural. Yeah. But what's the standard really? Love your, your wife as Christ loved the church. Now it's impossible. Exactly. But you're somehow called to, <laughs> to that, do that. Uh, taking something that seems mundane, marriage. Yeah. But actually the calling we must do is impossible. To love as Christ loved That's us. That's right. You know, you and know? the command, wow. if I can add this in, the command is not to be happy. Mm. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's to die. Okay. I don't yeah. like writing this one <laughs> down, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We okay. prioritize happiness a little too. Uh, we've made That's happiness That's a hill to die. <laughs> we've made it a hill to die on. Yeah, yeah. happiness is happiness a hill Happiness and to comfort. Die. I'd rather die on happy hill than turtle hill, but I get, I get, I get your point. <laughs> but you were born for fulfillment, not happiness. That's oh, beautiful. come on. It's deeper. Yeah. Yeah, you were born That's to beautiful. be fulfilled, wow. to have purpose. Yeah. Think about the Christian martyrs. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think they were happy when they were being devoured by lions and burned alive and, you know, watch, you know fathers and mothers watching their children, yeah. you know, be abused? Do you think they, they were happy, you know, that they were feeling like, oh, the joy of the Lord, you know? No, come on, you know. But mm -hmm. they understood this is serving a greater purpose. And, and I really do believe, does God want us to be happy? Sure he does. You know, the word blessed can be translated as happy. But it's it's just so much more than that, you yeah. know. And the problem is we've made happiness our requirement for obedience. Mm. Mm. It's like we want God to promise us happiness so that we will obey. It does, oh, I don't know if I said that right. But it's like, if I'm going to obey you, Lord, please guarantee me that when I do that, I'll be happy. Sure, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you want to send me to Africa as a missionary you know, make it so that I'm happy. Or if you want me to marry that person, make it so that I'm happy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Does God want us? Yes, theoretically God does. But it's not about your happiness is not more important than his happiness. Mm -hmm. And so there are times that we go through periods in life where we are not happy, but he is. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I understand that what a challenging thought that is. Yeah. But you know, we have to understand that because the the faith, that that impossible faith, um, is not accessible unless happiness is under our feet rather than over our head. Mm. Mm. You know? Yeah. And um, yeah, being happy it's a fruit, you know. Yeah, uh, I love it when the sun is shining, not when the rain is pouring, like right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. the rain doesn't make me yeah. happy, but it's making some farmer happy, especially in West Texas where it's mm -hmm. been so dry recently, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody's happy out there because it's raining. Mm. But taking Catherine to the airport, I wasn't happy because it was raining. Yeah. yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just so happiness is so fleeting. Yeah, and wow. and and this is this is I'm sorry guys, I, I kind of got off track, but this is That's really beautiful. one of my kind of pet peeves. You know, I Let's see go. this idolatry of happiness mm. <laughs> and, you know, couples, you know, knocking on our door and saying, oh, I'm just not happy in my marriage. I'm like, and? <laughs> so g give me a verse that says you're going to be happy in your marriage if you do it according to God's will. Where is that in the Bible? It was Jesus like exuberant with joy and, and feeling the tickle of the Holy Spirit when he's suffering on the cross? I don't think so. Hmm. You know, uh, now he had the joy of the Lord and for the joy of the Lord he endured the cross, but the cross is something to endure. The cross itself is never a source of joy. Well, would you distinguish between you know? the emotion of happiness, temporary emotion of happiness and that eternal joy? 
Yeah, well, listen, they're they're kind of like cousins, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and so like if if we're looking at at, at you know the Greek language hmm. and trying to translate that into modern American English, mm -hmm. yeah, we have to under we can take happiness in the in that biblical context. But if you're looking at the social context of happiness today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know that you know people say, well, I'm not happy in my marriage, so I'm going to go find somebody that makes me happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll divorce. I'll throw my kids in through emotional trauma and, you know, make my wife uh, suffer innumerable feelings of, of rejection. And, and I'm going to go out and find my own personal happiness. All in the name of happiness. Yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. And that happiness there mm. where That's I an idol. sacrifice. That yeah. is an idol of happiness. Exactly. And I yeah. sacrifice my integrity. I yeah. sacrifice my manhood. I sacrifice my, my calling in God, my purpose for living, legacy. I, my legacy. I sacrifice all of that <clears throat> out of the pursuit of a personal feeling of happiness. Yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. And, um, and I hear it all the time. And, and the, the, the thing that concerns me most is I hear it among pastors. Mm. You know, I'm just not happy. Wow. Mm. I'm just not happy. And, and listen, I understand it. I, I'm rarely happy, but I'm always joyful. Mm. I'm rarely happy in the context of the world, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm grateful, okay? But it, it wouldn't take me anything to start looking at all the negative things going on, and suddenly, and I'm like, pfft. Is it worth it? You know, why do this? Why carry <laughs> on? You guys know what I mean. Yep. yep. Yeah. And um, so you choose not to look at all that stuff. And you focus on the positive stuff. And you remind yourself purposefully, intentionally, every morning. You fight that face. I'm not allowing my mind to focus on what's negative. Mm -hmm. I will focus on what is positive. You know, you see that toxic sheep in the church and you just you purpose yourself. I'm not and a focus on what is negative. I'm not going to close and pretend there isn't toxicity, but I'm not going to focus on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to speak in faith to that part that has potential. And then that's that's yeah, we've we've got to learn that as men and women of God. Yeah. You know, Jesus was constantly surrounded by toxicity. Yeah. Every day people wanted to kill Jesus. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it just, it, it reminds me of a story very quickly, if I can share this, but yeah. I met a young couple at a, at a missionary retreat in, uh, in France, uh, and they were drawing from all over Western Europe, and it was a couple from Argentina, and they had served, if I name off the, the great revivalists of Argentina, some are still alive today, mm. they've served under these ministries. And I was like stoked. I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" You know, or, you know, somebody that served in these great ministries, and you know, like, tell me what was it like? And they're like, "Oh yeah, we're burned out. Yeah, you know, we're not even sure we believe in God anymore." Hmm. I'm like, "What?" Yeah. So we found the the country the furthest away from Argentina to go to. So they went to Andorra, which is this little bitty um, what they call a, a <laughs> principality that's stuck on the, in the. Um, Pyrenees Mountains between Spain and France. Okay, it's like a city state. Mm. And they went there to plant a church to get as far away from Argentina and the revival as possible. Wow. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And, uh, and they, they were just in such a state of burnout and depression. Mm. And they said, Robert, you just have no idea. You know, the, we, they would get bomb threats every day. People would call their ministry headquarters and say, you know, we planted bombs in the stadium. And, and it's your decision. The man of God's out in prayer, preparing for the message. You decide whether the meeting goes forward or not. Mm. I've actually heard of a few meetings like this, like even in America. Really? Yeah. That's weight. That's it's real weight. It's a lot. Yeah. And then, so you deal with all of that, and then you come home, and all around your house, down the street, are thousands of people camping out because they found out that you're part of the team that's connected to the great evangelist and they're there wanting you to pray for them. Mm. And all you want to do is get your children to bed and you can't even get to the front door. And you deal with this day after day after day. There's never a moment where it lets up. 
And he told me some of the most phenomenal stories. He told me the story about a guy he had no arm after the elbow, the, you know, the arm had been amputated. And in front of his eyes, an entire arm grew out as the evangelist prayed. I mean, Amazing. story after story, mm. things that you and I, we would drool over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, we were like, oh God, you know, I want to see that. Mm -hmm. And he said, but, and we, we walked away from all of it because we couldn't handle the stress. Hmm. We, we need to be careful when we pray for revival because God might give us that kind. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. it's fun to pray for <laughs> revival. It gets us all gilly gilly, you know, that French you know, for tickle. And, uh, <laughs> what was that sound? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. You know, but, but anyway, all, all that, to, again, to say, guys, listen, where, where we are is, is a great place. Um, we've got a long road in, ahead of us. It's a, it's a marathon. And um, I'm the kind of guy, I don't like running, but this is a race. You have to run, <laughs> you know, so, so you do it. And, um, and, and I really believe if, if everybody would, would really focus on the must-dos and, and, and ask God to, to give clarity to us on the must-dos, then there will always be faith for the grace necessary hmm. to walk that out, uh, for our children to grow up. Um, you know, on the foreign mission field, I, I told the Lord, um, you know, God, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll pay any price you want me to pay, but I'm never gonna ask my children to pay the price for my faith. Hmm. I, don't, I don't think that's the requirement you put on me. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, uh, I am old, I was young, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. So I said, God, this is what you will do. You will provide this for my children, you know. And I don't mind living on the edge. I don't mind living like I don't know how we're going to pay our mortgage, and I don't know how we're going to put food on the table next month. I don't mind that. If that's how you want me to live, I will live that way, you know. Now, if you want my children to live that way, that's fine, but they have to hear you say that. Hmm. They can't be forced to live that life because I heard you say that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and there, what's what's really great, and in Tennessee you get you see it, and especially the only place you see an entire generation rising up. The, um, you know, and 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 you've taken ownership of the vision. You know, the Solomon that got from their dad. You know, the vision for the temple. And you've made it your mandate. Your mission is is, is the dream of the mm -hmm. Father, you know. And I love that. You know, you've bought into that. And this is a template that's going to be repeated throughout 10C. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're working on the same. We're just a few years behind you guys, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, But we're working on the same template. So, you know, this, this is where we're going. And, and I believe this is where God wants to go, wants to take the whole body of Christ. Yes. You know. But it does mean that, you know, maybe Pastor Randy's must-dos, those are his must-dos, but are they your must-dos? For them to become your must-dos, you have to hear that from heaven. You have to hear that from God. Because it can be a want-to, and that's okay. But if it's just a can-do, then it's dangerous. You know, it's really dangerous. So we've got to kind of yank that out of the can-do and at least get it into the want-to-do where we're assured that, okay, there's usually grace, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, at some point there has to be that divine revelation. No, this is the must do. Mm -hmm. This is my hill. You know, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to put everything out there because this is my hill. Yeah. You know, and, and there are hills all throughout Tennessee. Amen. Yeah. You know, there's a hill in Bulgaria, there's a hill in Finland and Japan and Honduras. And, you know, there's hills all over the world that are part of our beautiful family we call Tennessee. And, um, and there are hills out there. And we want to bless you and strengthen you. Uh, but it's your hill, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and together we'll, we'll take our individual hills and they're all part of a, a federation, kind of a federation of hills in a way, you know. 
I love this. Uh, but, um, and, and, and we can learn from each other. You know, like my little three do's, little hair do's, um, you know, are just ways that God spoke to me and, and got me moving down the road. But and there's other guys out there with other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but each one of us has a hill that is our hill. We've got to take that hill. It's our must do. And, and just focus on that. Okay, focus on that. Have the integrity, have the humility to leave behind the cans. Mm -hmm. And focus on what is absolutely impossible for you to do on your human strength. Mm -hmm. And you have to cry out to God and, and, and spend everything you have, you know, to take that hill. And, um, you know, when David talks about the Lord being his rock, it, it comes from the battle when Saul's forces had, had successfully surrounded him. And they were on, on a hill. Hmm. And as, that, as the circle of Saul's army tightened, David's men went higher and higher up on the hill until they were finally on this rock. And they were above the tree line in full view of the archers below. Hmm. And this was David's last moment. And suddenly the leader of, of Saul's forces gets a word saying that the Philistines had just attacked and they were to des desist from following after David immediately and go and, and defend against the Philistines. Mm. So David's whole thing, he said, you know, the Lord is my rock. Wow. That's where that mm. comes from. That's that was cool. David's hill. And David's hill became the rock. Uh, and that's where he met God in a way that he never could have met God anywhere else. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so so you can take it. You can take your hill. Good. So good. Wow. Mm. I love it. That's so good. Thank you, Pastor yeah, Robert. Yeah, hey. I really a, appreciate a this. Pleasure, joy. Uh, pouring, pouring into this. Um, I, uh, we already prayed, but, but maybe, John, would you just give us a quick prayer out here as we... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yo, yeah, well, Lord, we just... We just thank you. We just um, honor the word that you've shared with us today. Lord, we just ask you for um, clarity, Lord. I, I just pray that you would um, help those of us who are, who are listening, wondering what our hill is, Lord, that you would just make that so so real to us, Lord, that you would um, kind of move away the fog and the noise, Lord, and that you would, you would bring and settle in our hearts what you're really asking from us, Lord, that you would clear out the noise, Lord, and you would just help us to see what you're asking and, and that you would help us to be obedient, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, we thank you. We receive grace, Lord. We receive yes, uh, Lord. refreshment. We receive uh, strength, Lord, for the call that you've, you've um, tasked us with, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you for um, being so present, being so with us, Lord, uh, as we do this, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord. Um, we just, we just come against discouragement, Father, yes, for anyone yes, who's just felt like they lost the hill. We just say you haven't mm. lost the hill. Yes. You're not done. You're not too far gone. You haven't messed it up, Lord. We just thank you for your redemptive mm. plan, your restoring plan at work in our lives. Mm. Lord, we just thank you for the, the wisdom to tell the difference between the, the can-dos, the must-dos, and the wanna-dos. In Jesus' name, yes, God. we thank you. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hey, what I would say is uh, just take one moment and think, do you have a, a leader in your life, someone you know of, that, that you think may be dealing with, with burnout or just a lot of stress and consider sending this to them? I think it'll, it'll be really good. Thank you again, yeah. Pastor Robert. Pleasure. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. You bet. Bye-bye.